John Troglita was a 6th-century Byzantine general. He participated in the Vandalic War and served in North Africa as a regional military governor during the years 533 to 538, before being sent east to the wars with the Sassanid Persians. As Dux Mesopotamia, Troglita distinguished himself in several battles, and was noticed by agents of the Byzantine Emperor, Justinian I. In summer 546, Justinian chose John Troglita to assume overall command of Byzantine forces in Africa, where a succession of revolts by the indigenous Moorish tribes and within the imperial army itself had seriously reduced the Byzantine position. Troglita quickly secured an initial victory in the winter of 546-547 against the Moors of Byzacena but was defeated in summer 547 by the tribes of Tripolitania, and Africa was once again laid open to destructive raids. Troglita reorganized his army and secured the assistance of some tribal leaders, and confronted and decisively defeated the tribal coalition at the fields of Cato in summer 548. This victory spells the end of the Moorish revolt, and heralded an era of peace for Africa. Troglita was also involved in the Gothic War, twice sending some of his troops to Italy to assist against the Ostrogoths. John Troglita's exploits, especially against the Moors in Africa, are the subject of the last Latin epic poem of antiquity, the Iohannis. Seu de Bellus Libicis of Flavius Cresconius Corippus, which is the main source on his life, origins and early career in Africa and the East. The exact origins of John Troglita are unclear. He may have been born in Thrace, but his peculiar surname might indicate provenance from Trogilos in Macedonia. According to information provided by the 6th century historian Procopius of Caesarea and Troglita's Panegyrus Flavius Cresconius Corippus, he was the son of a certain Nevanthus, and had at least one brother named Papis. Troglita himself married a daughter of O King, probably a barbarian chieftain, and had a son, Peter. John Troglita is first mentioned as having participated in the Vandalic War under Belisarius, and may be identifiable with another John, who commanded a unit of Fodorati in the battles of Adesimum and Tricamarum. Troglita remained in the province of Africa after Belisarius's departure in 534, and participated in the expeditions of Solomon against the Moors in 534-535. At the time, he was probably the local military governor in either Byzacena or, more probably, Tripolitania, for he is mentioned as leading successful expeditions against the Luathi tribe. Troglita also fought against the mutinous army under the renegade Stotses, participating in the first victory under Belisarius at Membraser in 536 and then, under Solomon's successor Germanus, in the decisive battle at Scalus Veterus in spring 537. In this battle, he was one of the commanders of the cavalry on the Byzantine army's right wing, which according to the historian Procopius was defeated and driven off by Stotzus's men, losing its standards in the process. Nevertheless, the battle resulted in an imperial victory. In 538, Troglita distinguished himself in the Battle of Autanti, probably in the Byzacena. At some point after 538, Troglita was sent to the eastern frontier, where by 541 he was appointed Dux Mesopotamia, one of the most important military commands of the region. From this position, he arrested a member of the embassy sent by the Ostrogothic king Witages to the Persians to incite them to attack Byzantium. When war broke out, according to Corippus, John scored a number of successes against the Persian army. He defeated the general Nabdes near Nisibus, led his army in a successful night attack against the Persian force besieging Theodosiopolis, and then defeated another Persian army besieging Dara, capturing its general Mihr Myro. Procopius, 
however, gives a different account of the first battle, indicating that Troglita had to be saved from a sudden Persian attack by Belisarius, and does not mention the other two incidents at all. Nevertheless, Corippus maintains that John was congratulated for his performance by Urbisius, one of Emperor Justinian's advisors who had been sent to supervise the war. High command in Africa during Troglita's absence from Africa, the situation had been turbulent. Germanus had remained in the province until 539, and succeeded in restoring discipline in the army and pacifying the core territories of Africa, Proconsularis and Byzacena. He was succeeded by Solomon, who began his second tenure with great success defeating the Moors of the Ores Mountains and establishing control over Numidia and Mauritania Sitifensis. However, the Moorish revolt flared up again in 543 and Solomon was killed in the Battle of Cilium in 544. His successor, his nephew Sergius, was incompetent. He was defeated by the Moors, recalled and replaced with the senator Ariobundus who was murdered in spring 546 in another military revolt led by the general Guntheric. The latter intended to declare himself independent of Constantinople, but was soon murdered by the Armenian Artabanes. The need for a new and capable leader in Africa was apparent to Constantinople. After a truce was signed with Persia in 546, Emperor Justinian, perhaps, as Corippus implies, acting on Urbisius's advice, recalled Troglita from the east. After having him report on the situation there in Constantinople, the emperor placed him at the head of a new army and sent him to Africa as the new Magister Militum per Africam in late summer 546. Suppression of the Moorish Revolt in late 546, when John Troglita reached Carthage, the situation was dire. The imperial troops, under Marcentius the Dux of Byzacena and Gregory the Armenian in Carthage were few in number and demoralized. They held out in the coastal cities, blockaded by the Moors of Byzacena under their chieftain Antalis while the Luathi and Ostura tribes from Tripolitania were raiding Byzacena with impunity. Diplomatic efforts, however, secured the allegiance of the Moorish leaders Cutsinas and Iphistaeus, who joined the imperial army with several thousands of their men. In addition, the tribesmen of the Ores Mountains under Iudas withdrew to Numidia on learning of Troglita's arrival and pursued a course of armed neutrality. Upon his arrival in Carthage, Troglita reorganized his troops, bolstering the local forces with the veterans he had brought with him, mostly horse archers and cataphracts, and marched out to meet the rebels. At Antonia Castra, emissaries from Antalis presented themselves, but Troglita rejected their terms and imprisoned them. The Byzantine army marched into Byzacena, relieved the beleaguered cities and joined up with Marcentius. The Moors, taken by surprise by the imperial army's swift advance, withdrew again to the mountainous and wooded interior, where they gathered their forces under the leadership of Iana of the Luathian Antalis. Corippus suggests that they hoped that Troglita would not maintain his pursuit in the midst of winter, and that they would have the advantage over the imperial army in this terrain. Troglita encamped near the Moorish positions and dispatched an envoy, a Manchus, to bring Antalus his terms. The general offered amnesty in exchange for submitting to imperial authority again. Corippus narrates the subsequent battle at length, but his imitation of Virgilian verse provides little concrete detail. It is clear that it was a long, indecisive, and bloody conflict, which probably took place to the south or east of Sabatla in late 546 or early 547. Eventually, the Byzantines prevailed and drove back the Moors, breaking through their defences and storming their camp. According to Corippus, Inna, who was the chief priest of the god Gerzel, was killed while trying to protect an image of the god. Many other tribal leaders fell, and the remainder scattered. The remains of the Tripolitanian tribes abandoned by Zacena, and Antalus was forced to lay down arms. In addition, many prisoners were released from the Moorish camp. 
and among the treasures captured there were the military standards lost by Solomon at Cilium in 544. These were dispatched to Constantinople, while Troglita held a triumphal entry into Carthage. Battle of Marta with this victory, the war seemed won, and peace re-established in Africa. A few months later, however, the tribes of Tripolitania reassembled and formed a coalition under the king of the Ifuruses, Carcassonne. After raiding Tripolitania, they turned west to raid Byzacena again. Notified of this by Rufinus, the ducks of Tripolitania, Troglita marched Tau to meet them. The Byzantine army had been weakened in the meantime by the need to reinforce Belisarius against the Goths in Italy. Of the nine regiments Troglita had brought with him from Constantinople, three were dispatched to Italy. The Moors under Antalus remained hostile but did not immediately join the conflict for the moment. But the Byzantines were deprived of the services of Iphistaeus, who refused to commit his men. Despite the hot summer, Troglita marched his men quickly to the southern limit of Byzacena, along the edge of the desert, hoping to meet the Moors there and prevent the long-suffering province from being ravaged again. The Moors initially withdrew into the arid interior, hoping to shake him off, but Troglita's army, accompanied by a caravan with water and provisions, followed them into the desert. Both armies suffered from thirst and hunger, and discontent spread among the Byzantine soldiers. There, Troglita positioned himself between the Matmata Plateau and the coast, and awaited the Moors. He also sent for ships to bring supplies, but adverse winds made this impossible. When the Moorish army appeared nearby it was likewise exhausted from hunger and made for some sources of water, which Troglita set out to reach first. The Byzantines camped at Marta in the district of Gallica, where battle was joined. It was a disastrous defeat for the Byzantines, whose army broke and fled. Corippus, possibly in an attempt to exculpate his hero Troglita, attributes the defeat to the indiscipline of some soldiers, who attacked the enemy before the army was ready, leading to a disorganized piecemeal engagement. According to Corippus's account, the Moorish allies of the Byzantines panicked first and retreated, causing the entire army to disintegrate. Despite the personal intervention of Troglita and the other Byzantine leaders, following this defeat, Troglita fled to Aunsi, where he began regrouping the survivors. The losses were so high and the army's morale so low, however, that he was soon forced to withdraw further north to the fortress of Laribiz, where he started mustering his army. Learning of the battle, Antalus immediately rose up again and joined the Tripolitanian tribes, while the Byzantines Alilis, Cutsinas and Isfaderas were quarreling among themselves. Throughout the remainder of 547, the Moors were free to raid across Africa, even reaching the vicinity of Carthage itself. Battle of the Fields of Cato Troglitov did not remain inactive. From Carthage, the Praetorian prefect Athanasius and Troglita's young son organized reinforcements and supplies for the camp at Laribiz. While Troglita himself succeeded not only in reconciling Cutsinas and Isfaderas, but also in gaining the allegiance of King Iudas and his tribe. In the spring of 548, Troglita, having regrouped his forces, met with his Moorish allies at the plain of Arshoris on the northern limits of Byzacena. Corippus gives extraordinary numbers for the native contingents provided by each chief. 30,000 for Cutsinas, 100,000 for Isfaderas, and 12,000 under Iudas's brother. Whatever the real numbers, it seems clear that Troglita's regular troops formed the lesser portion of the imperial army. The tribes, under the leadership of Carcassonne and Antalus, had encamped in central Byzacena, in the plain of Mummer or Mams. Carcassonne, confident after his victory the previous year, wanted to confront the imperial army immediately, but as it happened he gave way to Antalus, 
who advocated the more cautious and well-tried Moorish tactic of withdrawing and drawing the Byzantines into the interior, forcing them to march far from their supply bases and through a devastated country, thus exhausting and demoralizing them. The rebels thus retreated south and east, reaching Iunsi after ten days. Troglita's army pursued them at some distance, only exchanging a few blows with the tribe's rear guard. Once the Byzantine army reached the plain before Iunsi and laid camp, however, the Moors again withdrew into the mountainous interior. Having been informed by a spy of his enemy's strategy, Troglita refused to follow, and remained encamped near the port of Lariscus, from where he could be easily resupplied. Nevertheless, discontent grew among the soldiers, who did not understand their leader's reluctance to fight. The army mutinied and attacked the tent of Troglita, who was barely able to escape. Thanks to the allied Moorish contingents, who remained steadfast, Troglita was able to reimpose control over his men. Troglita now moved his army to confront the enemy, who were encamped at a plain called the Fields of Cato. The Moorish camp had been heavily fortified, and Troglita was reluctant to launch a direct assault. He therefore blockaded it, hoping that hunger would force the Moors to fight him in open battle. To further encourage him, he restrained his men, feigning a reluctance to fight. Troglita's plan worked. Encouraged by sacrifices to their gods and hoping to catch the imperial army unprepared, the Moors attacked the Byzantine camp on a Sunday. The battle hung long in the balance, with many dead on both sides, but eventually the Byzantines gained the upper hand. At this point, Carcassonne rallied his forces and launched a fierce counterattack, but was killed by Troglita himself. Seeing their leader fall, the Moors broke and fled. The battle was a resounding success for the Byzantines. Seventeen of the Moors' principal leaders were dead, the Tripolitanian tribes were decimated and withdrew to the desert, and Antalus and his followers submitted to Troglita. Byzacena, Numidia, and Tripolitania were finally secured, and a period of peace was inaugurated that lasted for the next 14 years, until 562. Later activities at about this time, Troglita seems to have been promoted to the honorific court rank of Patricius, as attested by the 6th century historian Jordanus. He remained in command in Africa for at least another four years, beginning the difficult work of reconstruction. Troglita re-established the civil administrative apparatus as originally envisaged by Emperor Justinian in 533, sharing his authority with the prefect Athanasius. The provincial fortifications built by Solomon were restored, and the subdued Moorish tribes carefully returned to a status of vassalage as imperial foderati. According to the scholar John B. Berry, Troglita's record in re-establishing order and tranquility in the troubled province make him, along with Belisarius and Solomon, the third hero of the imperial reoccupation of Africa. Troglita's success in restoring peace to Africa can be seen from the fact that in late 551, when Totila, king of the Ostrogoths, captured Sardinia and Corsica, Troglita was able to spare enough forces and send a fleet to reclaim them, albeit without success. The exact date of Troglita's death is unknown, but it is most likely that he died in 552 or soon after.